All right, here, welcome to another edition of the program Weekend Review on Television Nigeria. And my name is Anthony Momodu. We'll be looking at the big events that occurred from the 16th to the 20th of April 2018, highlighting the big issues on the African continent and also on the global scene. Uh, this week's edition, we'll be looking at the African Land uh, Forces Summit that took place right here in Nigeria, where over 60 countries converged on uh, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Also, we'll be looking at the President's comment, which has gone uh, viral across board. And we'll be putting our searchlight also on the issue of the call by some members of the House of Representatives for the sack of the service uh, chiefs. Those are some of the issues we'll be looking at on the home front. On the global scene, we'll be putting our searchlight on Cuba, Cuba's new president. Uh, what are the expectations? And also, we'll be looking at US, North Korea uh, talks that will be coming up. Uh, the expectations also is what we'll be looking at. And the death of a very famous, renowned woman, talking about Barbara Bush, uh, who died uh, this week. We'll also be looking at that particular issue. And not forgetting the inspectors, uh, the nuclear inspectors uh, who are in Syria for the last one week and have not been given the opportunity to access Duma, where it was alleged there was a chemical attack. Uh, those are the big stories we'll be highlighting today. And um, today's program definitely is going to be very awesome because we have a very special guest who I'll be introducing after this break. Alright, welcome back from that break. Let's do the honors and introduce our guest for today's review program. We've got uh, Dr. Gideon Osi, who is a Commonwealth Ambassador and one of the leading Nigerians uh, who were, was very strategic in the call, talking about the October 1st uh, call where certain group of Nigerians did say to other uh, citizens to leave uh, their country and he was very instrumental to ensuring that there was peace. All right, uh, let's make welcome Dr. Gideon. Nice to have you join us on the uh, weekend review. Thank you, Nigerians. All right, so let's begin uh, our discourse today with the biggest story, one of the biggest stories that uh, took place uh, to sharpen uh, the skills of the Nigerian army to combat uh, security challenges. And looking at the fact that we had the U.S. as one of the countries uh, leading the team, uh, how strategic would you say this partnership is for Nigeria and the African continent? Well, it's very key, it's very strategic, especially when you look at the fact that Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa. It's huge economic benefit. So anything that shakes Nigeria is going to shake this part of the continent. If there's any crisis in this country, the surrounding nations will not be able to absorb the outflow from Nigeria. Our military has always been great, commendable, despite the conditions under which they work. So it's our prayer that such summit will continue to lift their spirits high and prepare them to play the global role for which they have been celebrated in the past. In the past. But, uh, let's go to the other big issue of the week, uh, which had to do with a call by some members of the House of Rep uh, calling on Mr. President to sack the service chiefs uh, because of the continuous killings and violence in the country. Uh, would you say, what would be your scorecard for the Nigerian uh, service chiefs and other security agencies? Very poor. In fact, the call is coming rather late. Because to be honest with you, until recently, maybe people in the National Assembly didn't see the way Nigerians were saying. People were being killed as if they were not human beings. All over the world, life is so highly respected, it's sacrosanct. But here, people die and everybody just continues as if nothing has happened. The communities, the villages that used to be very safe, it's no longer safe. The cities are not safe. So, where would the Nigerian people run to? So, if you are given an assignment to do, if you're a service chief, if you're a security chief, and there's no security, you don't even need to be sacked. You should sack yourself. You are being paid with the masses tax. You are being paid with the resources of a country to play a role. If you can't play that role, give the weight so that someone else can come and give his best. I feel, I strongly believe, that Nigeria cannot continue to live in this level of insecurity. That's not our bid. 
All right, uh, let's uh, look at the other trending issue that uh, uh, occurred, uh, looking at our, the missing maze. Finally, luckily, we found the maze. Uh, but in your own estimation, uh, how sad is that commentary, the way it occurred, and the fact that we had uh, Senator Omogege in the, in the picture of things that occurred, and how did they beat over 250 security apparatus in the National Assembly? That's well, I don't know why everybody is crying far over the missing of the base. So many things are missing in Nigeria. There's missing of quality education. There's missing of good health. There is missing food on the table. If the maze got missing, sin, so be it. To be sincere with him, what happened in the National Assembly is a replication, it's a, it's a reflection of exactly what's happening in Nigeria. There's no security anywhere. To make the matters worse, those who are supposed to ensure that things are done right are sitting there in the comfort of their homes enjoying a pseudo life which is not a Nigerian life for five young men to walk into the National Assembly during a session and take away the base tells you that the Nigerian youths are getting ready for what is to come it's a reflection, it's, it's a sign and we must watch it carefully first and foremost, first and foremost I condemn that as that's action, no doubt. Okay. It's, it's a rape, a rape on our democracy. But you see, but you see what in this, what in this to the other? I do not believe that those five men walked into the National Assembly, beat all the security apparatus, took the base, and left the National Assembly on hand and dropped the base under the flyover. It's a lie. But because we are used to trying to patch issues and trying to act a drama out of nothing, we will get tired of it because this new generation of the next leaders will not condone this kind of manipulation. There is something that we are not being told. And I feel the people who are in charge should investigate further. They will find the truth. A lot of critics have said probably the executive have a hand in it doing that. On that day, the re -elect uh, election reordering of the was supposed to be passed. Well, whether the executive had a hand in it or not, there are also some members of the National Assembly who could have a hand in it. They may call it legislative gymnastics. They may call it administrative or democratic manipulation. Whatever name they want to give it, the fact is that we are not on the right track to development. And we must come back and move like other nations in Africa who are developing. The economies are rising. Nigerian youths are not being prepared for the next generation. That should give them concern. All right, uh, let's uh, look at the summary of the IGF police and the, the boss of DSS. Uh, is that the right way to go? Uh, we likely to get the best out of that investigation. If the investigation will be genuine, it's one thing to summon the IG and summon the DGSSS. It's another thing to summon the conscience of the Nigerian leadership. Because without genuine leadership, all these summons will be tantamount to nothing. All right, uh, the, one of other big stories that is currently trending is the fact uh, that uh, the president made some, they made some comments as regards to 60% of Nigerian youth uh, being uneducated, being lazy, sitting at home just waiting to get everything free. Uh, sensing that comment from Mr. President, would you say he has done terrible in terms of the way he portrays his countrymen every time he steps out of the shores of Nigeria? Well, let me correct you. He didn't say something like he said the sixty percent of the Nigerian people are youths below the age of thirty, okay, and that they are uneducated, they are illiterate, they are not willing to do anything, they are not hardworking, they are lazy, they are just waiting for the oil money to share. Is that true, my dear friend? The youth of a nation is a product of their leadership. It's a self-indictment. If he thinks that Nigerians, Nigerian youths are lazy. They are not educated. It means the leadership of this country over the years are to be blamed. Go all over the world. The leadership set the pace. That is why they are on the seats. That's why they have been paid to do that. They set the pace to lead the country, to ensure that children survive, reduce uh, child mortality, to ensure that women survive, reduce maternal mortality, to ensure there's quality education. To ensure that the economy is growing, to ensure that there is security, to ensure sound defense of that nation around its territory. Now, when that fails, it means that leadership is failed. In this context, I must tell you, the Nigerian youth that I know, for which we all belong to, are not busy. If you go everywhere, 
from the villages down to the township, they are hardworking. The Nigerian youth that I know within and outside this country are examples to behold. They are educated, well read. Those who do not have access to good education, or those who have gone to school and out but couldn't get a job, are striving to survive. Those who are lazy know themselves and they are the ones leading the populations of this country into abject poverty. All right, uh, on that very instructive note, we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll be focusing on the foreign scene, looking at the big stories for the week. For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. Some have in the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents want to control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now, for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. All right, welcome back from that break. You're still watching Weekend Review on Television Nigerian. My name is Anthony Momodu, and we've been talking with Dr. Gideon Osi, uh, who is a Commonwealth Ambassador, uh, helping us look at the big stories for the week. Let's hit the foreign scene. Just recently, Cuba, uh, you know, anointed a new president in the person of Miguel Diaz uh, Canel, the first person outside the Castro family since 1959. Uh, are you impressed with the direction Cuba is heading to? Well, it doesn't last forever. It's a good sign that they could transit without any crisis. A change from the old order. It's a, it's, for us, we expect better things to come. So it's a very good omen. Okay, the fact that uh, the president now has said he's going to continue the Castro agenda, uh, does that make you hopeful that the, uh, the, uh, the Cuban people are going to see true change? In the interim, yes, he may say so. In the long run, he will not do that. That you can quote me to one. In the interim, you said that to maintain the tempo, to start off and to take control of the apparatus of that country. But when he starts leading, the man in him will come out to go in the direction he believes will be better for his country, if he is a good leader. All right, uh, let's go to Syria now. We've got the organization for the prohibition of uh, chemical weapons. Uh, they've been in Syria for the last one week and uh, still yet to uh, have access to Duma, where it was alleged there was a chemical uh, attack. The, the, the narration globally is that Russia is purposely delaying these inspectors because they are having something to hide. Do you share that opinion? Well, I won't share that opinion until I have evidence. Okay. For now, global politics is full of conspiracies. And this may just be one of them. So let's wait until the report is out. If they delay them for one month or they delay them for one year, in the whole wide world, the truth will always emerge. All right, uh, looking at uh, the sad story coming from the United States of America, uh, Barbara Bush uh, finally uh, you know, died and at the age of 92. Uh, a week before then, she had refused for that treatment when her health was failing. Uh, how unique uh, has Barbara been knowing that she was married to a president, a U.S. president, and also her son being finally becoming a U.S. president too? Does that make her very historic in the U.S. history? Not just in the U.S. history, history and in global history. She's made history, and uh, different people have different ways of assessing success as well as as well as evaluating greatness. For me, I think she's a great woman, married to a president, and gave birth to a president, managing the influence around power and remaining herself by our standard. It goes to teach again those in power that nothing lasts forever. She has lived her time. It's a time to go. When she goes, others will continue. In all we do, we must always remember that we have timeline to stay here. So for Barbara, wish the family 
the strength to bear the loss and wish the Americans the wonderful time that she spent with them the, to be the memory upon which their women will be able to live up to the expectation of the world. All right, uh, let's go to North Korea. Uh, looking at North Korea, uh, Trump and North Korea are now likely to meet in the coming days. Uh, are you very positive about that meeting already? Trump is saying if he smells a rat, if he thinks the meeting is not going to be fruitful, he's going to walk, walk away. Uh, what does that tell you? He's always talking, talking tough. Well, he's not the only one who can talk tough. Before the meeting, he has already started saying if it's not going to go well, he's going to walk okay. out. Yeah. Working out may not be the solution. Let them go in for the meeting first. The world is waiting because we need peace across the world. And this meeting is very key to that global peace. So when they get in, whatever the outcome is, there should only be room for continuous negotiation. Diplomacy, dialogue, is just the only way to go. Because when we begin to go into war, lives will be lost, resources will be wasted, and of course it will be more difficult to heal the wounds that will come out of it. So now is the time to solve that problem. All right, uh, we'll go for another quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking at the comments of the week, then we'll wrap it up on Weekend Review. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment. Qualified and experienced teachers. Equipped computer laboratory and library. Secured atmosphere. Extracurricular activities. An all embracing curriculum for total development of the child. Comprehensive education for leadership. Join us today from crash to secondary levels. Living Treasures Academy, committed to excellence. All right, uh, welcome back from that quick break. Uh, it's now time to, this is the last segment of the program where we look at the comment of the week or the statement of the week. I uh, want to look at the statement of Mr. President as regards uh, Nigerian youth and uh, take, taking it back to 2015, 2014-2015 when uh, the former president, Good Luck Jonathan, made a statement on his all of his foreign trips. He said, uh, despite the incredible challenges uh, Nigeria was facing, Nigerian youths have always done the country proud, putting Nigeria on the top of the map positively and, and saying Nigerian youths are inspiration for their leaders. That was a comment of uh, Good Luck Jonathan. In comparison to what Mr. President Buhari has said, which is your comment of the week and which comment is more instructive and which is more destructive? Well, I don't, be, I don't need to be the one to make that assessment. Nigerians already know. The world already knows. Every lettered man who goes through both statements knows which is the statement of the week. But I must say in this, at this point in time, that in as much as Good Luck Jonathan spoke like a president and the speech of Buhari was so unpresidential, I must say that I smell a very big rat somewhere. Who are those writing the speeches of Mr. President, President Buhari in this contest? Who are those guiding him? Because the president may not know everything. I wish sure there's no internal sabotage. Because no right-thinking president will stand before a global community and bring down the image of the population that drive our economy. Because when the youth of this country begin to go anywhere, to multinationals, within and outside the country, to search out for a living, the chances are that they will be viewed with the eye that the president has presented them. That's not how to grow a country. I don't just know if this was meant just to keep Nigerians talking. If it was to, just to keep the newspapers selling, no problem, but it has a dire implication in the life of our people and the life of our country. All right, uh, that's how we call it a wrap on Weekend Review for this week. It's been awesome speaking to Dr. Gideon Osi, the Commonwealth Ambassador right here, uh, giving us very constructive and patriotic views to all the big stories we looked at 
on the local scene and also on the foreign scene. And that's yeah. how we call it a wrap on the program. We can review special thanks to the entire production team that made this production come out also. Thank you very much. And to you for always being part of Television Nigeria. My name is Anthony Mowodis saying have a lovely weekend and see you next week. <laughs>